for ECE 4960 Senior Design 2. We are Team 17, and our project this semester was the image processing robot. The objective of this project is to create a prototype of an automated warehouse system. The goal is to have a system that utilizes multiple robots in coordination with live footage to be able to move objects from a starting location to a given, defined, final location within a structured environment. As the innovation of automation continues across all industries, the desire to have as many tasks as possible be automated is on the rise. Such automated systems show benefits in efficiency, cost reduction over time, and an overall safer environment less susceptible to workplace accidents. With this increase of automation seen across all forms of industry, it is increasingly necessary to upgrade to such systems to stay competitive. It is reported that 65% of warehouse operating expenses are in labor alone. A worthwhile investment will be to eliminate these costs. These systems are needed to improve performance and increase efficiency in organizing warehouse operations. Not only are warehouses becoming larger and larger, but the amount of unique items found within them is drastically increasing due to a large-scale online shopping and the need for performance centers to facilitate the change in consumer tendencies. With 95,000 warehouse-related injuries occurring each year, it is necessary to reduce injury by reducing the reliance of humans within these systems through automation. In order to design the system successfully, these key factors above needed to be considered. To develop an automated system, code needed to be created that would allow these warehouse management systems to operate independently of any human guidance or oversight. To this end, the system was designed with a central system to perform computations and relay them wirelessly to robots to quickly send data needed for operations. The robots themselves were designed in such a way that they are simple, yet suitable for their tasks in an attempt to make their implementation modularized for usage in warehouses of various sizes based on needs. They needed to be made with a way to move the objects, which is why arms on each side of the robot were needed to guide the objects once the robot reached them. These robots could also not be tethered to a power source, and therefore batteries were used as the power supply for our system. Additionally, a method was devised to determine the orientation of the robot, which was needed for motor control and moving the robot to its desired location. Distinct colored markers were added to the top of the robot chassis to distinguish the front and back of each robot. Each object tasked to an individual robot was also given a distinguishable color identifier. The program for the image processing we have designed is easily able to identify objects of various colors. To increase efficiency and practicality of the overall system, they needed to be robust and able to move objects to their desired locations each time without mistake. The system design is able to track both the robots and the system as well as the objects needed to move. Our system was fine-tuned to ensure that this process could be completed accurately and repetitively. To further increase the reliability of our warehouse organization system, the robots are programmed to enter into, into a discrete correction loop if they ever stray from their path to destination. In order to demonstrate the system aspects of how the code works needed to be readily observed, to show where the robot is intended to travel, the distance between the robot and its de destination, either the object that is traveling to or the final desired destination of the object is displayed on the program terminal. The relative angle between the front of the robot and the destination as calculated within the program is also displayed in this terminal. Within the program, the video feed is displayed and an overlay shows the colors that are detected by the program displaying real time as seen by the system. Finally, the live demonstration of our system showcases the capabilities of the warehouse system itself. During testing, it was made evident that the motors would not act the same way for every run or day of runs. In order to rectify this problem, autocorrection code was added to the Arduino code that dealt with the motors. This way, anytime the program calculated the angle between the robot and the object to be greater than 15 degrees, the Arduino would make note of that and run an algorithm to rotate the robot back towards the object. The inclusion of this code increased the accuracy of the system from about uh, 4 out of 10 runs to 8 out of 10 runs. The reason this is not higher is because the arms of the robot would sometimes push the object out of the range. Since our system revolved around the distinction between different colors, proper RGB and HFV values were important to get right. If the ranges were too large, the noise would be picked up by the computer vision code. A closer look shows that the blue on the robot was slightly larger than, than where it should be. Not only that, but the red cup is not fully enclosed by the contours due to the darker red being outside the HSV range determined in the code. While the parameter to figure out these values is a quantitative in nature, it takes qualitative inspection in order to see if what is being picked up should be or should not be. In order to characterize the robot being close enough to the object or the destination, the centroids of specified colors are found and used to calculate how far they are via the distance formula. The robot was placed in a way close to the cup or destination in order to see what threshold should be used afterwards. Any time the robot got within this threshold, the program would initiate the next phase. Python, the language used for programming purposes on the Raspberry Pi 4 portion of the system, was utilized to help the Raspberry Pi 4 interpret the image captured by the camera. 
To make this interpretation easier, the OpenCV library was used to shorten the time needed to otherwise create the computer vision code by hand. During the formulation of the project, the idea of using the Raspberry Pi was an early topic. This required looking into what Raspberry Pis usually use in terms of programming languages. After the inclusion of the OpenCV library, the Raspberry Pi can now make sense of inputted images and use information from it in order to process data that is important for later aspects of the overall system. Since it is a central location for computation, the Raspberry Pi dealt with labeling which pertinent colors were available in the environment and calculating their centroid positions in regards to the camera's window. The colors that it looked for in the functional system were red, which symbolized the object that needed to be moved, and yellow and blue, which distinguished the front and back ends of the mobile robot, respectively. Those centroids are then used to calculate the relative angles between the robot and the object that it needs to get to, whether that, object, whether that is the object needed to be moved or the final destination, whenever it has already reached this object. The system discerns which state the operation is in, making use of the distance formula, and the gathered centroids with the proper angles are being sent to the Arduino. The angle calculation code needs to calculate two inverse square roots each time it runs. To implement this, a few lines of open source code are used from the video game Quake 3 Arena. This code uses casting and bit shifting to approximate the inverse square root with a maximum error of about 43 thousandths. One problem discovered along the way was that too many update signals were sending per second. The Raspberry Pi was sending a large amount of redundant data to the Arduino, halting operation of the mobile robot unit. To combat this, the second command in the code was placed inside an if statement to compare the previously sent data to the current that is awaiting sending. If these data are the same, the current data is not sent. This drastically cut down the amount of data sent per second between devices and eliminated this problem. Moving into transceiver communications, the communication between the vision system and the robot is established using a transceiver module operating at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. The transceivers may act as both transmitters and receivers simultaneously to allow for bidirectional communication. Unidirectional communication was adequate for the system at hand. The module associated with the vision systems act as the transmitter while the module on the robot acts as the receiver. Specifically, the vision system collects data from the environment, calculates the angle between the robot's direction and the desired target, and then transmits that angle to the robot. For each iterative loop of the program, the transceiver, which is attached to the Arduino, is prompted to read in the RF signal being sent from the transmitting transceiver. If the radio link is available, the information being read in at each instant is in the form of a character string due to limitations within the communication link, so the code converts this to an integer representing the real-time relative angle between the robot's orientation vector and the vector from the robot to the target location at that instant. A crucial part of the program is the readjustment loop. This loop takes the relative angle, which the robot needs to turn to, and converts into an integer number of 5 degree pulses, either clockwise or counterclockwise, so that when this loop is entered, the robot will pause and pulse in increments of 5 degrees until it has reached the relative angle, meaning that its position vector will be in line with its target location. This loop is automatically entered at the beginning of the program, so that the robot will adjust to its first target object, and it is re-entered throughout the program if the angle between the robot's real-time position vector and the vector between the robot and the target location has a deviation greater than 15 degrees. This allows for the robot to autonomously readjust itself as it moves along the path to correct for any unanticipated drifting. When the readjustment loop is finished, the robot automatically moves in the straight line until it receives one of two signals. Either the readjustment loop will, be, will need to be re-entered, meaning the robot's path has drifted from the correct path by more than 15 degrees, or the robot has reached its target location. These are two such target locations, the object needing to be moved and the final destination for the object. There's a simple variable and signaling scheme used to distinguish between the two, consisting of the 195 being sent and an alternating variable. In this way, the Arduino code for this motor control subsystem is completely modular, so that the amount of target objects of designated locations can be arbitrary. All that is needed is the real-time relative angle from the image processing software, a simple indicator signal, and several alternating Boolean variables, which control which portion of the overall movement sequence the robot is in. The Arduino sends its control signal to a motor driver in order to properly power the DC motors. The motor driver used was the L293D H-Bridge motor driver IC. The Arduino has four digital output pins dedicated to controlling the two motors via this motor driver, each pair of pins connecting to a pair of terminals on the driver, connecting to the positive and negative terminals of the motor. The digital output signal is used for PWM signals, so that a higher PWM duty cycle corresponds to more average power being delivered to the DC motor, corresponding to a higher rate of rotation of the wheels. In this way, simply adjusting the PWM outputs of the digital Arduino pins will adjust the rotation rate of each wheel. One thing to note is that there is a high degree of variability of the motor response to PWM power levels, even differing between the motors and across time, so if the readjustment loop mentioned before is necessary to correct any drifting caused by non-ideal motor responses to the PWM control signals. 
There are also two separate 9 volt batteries being used per robot, one to power the Arduino and one to power the motor driver, as it was found that the Arduino sometimes was not able to supply sufficient power to the driver on its own. Overall, the project had its fair share of strengths and weaknesses. On the coding side of things, it was written to be modular and scalable in order to be apl applicable in factors ranging in size of the facility and budget as to how many robots they are willing to purchase. As for functionality, the idea is that a company can flag the objects they want moved to designated areas with the use of colors. Because of this idea, extensive testing was done in order to find appropriate RGB and HSV boundaries so if the system could distinguish colors the user is looking for and lower the changes of noise in the form of similar colors being falsely picked up. After upgrading hardware from the Raspberry Pi 0W to the Raspberry Pi 4, the speed of the image processing was almost in real time. This slight delay could be attributed to the use of the VNC viewer to view the contents of the Raspberry Pi as opposed to a monitor. Lastly, arguably the strongest aspect of the project is the readjustment code on the Arduino connected to the robot. This inclusion of the code makes it possible to ignore the fact that not all motors are created the same. So if one motor is overpowering the other and the robot gets off track of its destination by more than 15 degrees, the Arduino makes note and stops progressing forward in order to face the direction it is supposed to. For the weaknesses, inconsistent motors were an issue prior to the creation of the self-correction code within the Arduino. During each testing session, the group had to mess with the motors to recalibrate them for them to go straight. Due to the system being wireless, noise was a likely issue to happen, but strangely did not occur until the project's due date came closer. The reason for this is still unknown, but one idea is due to faulty wires. Another problem was that the power consumption of the robot. Batteries had to be subbed out after each lengthy session, but using multimeters proved that the batteries were not dead, but no longer had the power to drive the motor drivers. Lastly, due to the system being composed of so many subsystems that depended on each other, debugging took longer than expected. If the issue is not clear enough to come from a certain part of the subsystem, tests for each system had to be made in order to narrow down these potential problems.